78 Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty LDBC, Lions Den basketball community. In this case, smash the like button, hit the subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell to so be notified when I drop a new video. And if you're digging the video, go ahead and share the video. So, I saw an interesting segment today on ESPN First Take Stephen A. Smith's list, Stephen A.'s list. And this particular list was uh, NBA players under the most pressure to win a title. And you can see Stephen A's list um, behind it right here. It says he has Chris Paul at number one, James Harden, Jason Tatum, Nicole Jokic, and Kawhi Leonard. So let's talk about this list and why I actually agree with this list. I might disagree with where some of the guys are placed, but I actually agree with the list. Actually a good list by Stephen A. Smith. Now, as far as Kawhi Leonard um, under pressure, the reason why uh, you would suggest that Kawhi Leonard might be under pressure, even though he is already a champion, is because uh, of his, the promises of going to the Clippers. He went to the Clippers uh, to take over L.A. You know, LeBron was going to the uh, the Lakers. Kawhi is going to the Clippers. It was just going to be this huge rivalry that never actually happened for the fans and for the media that were trying to hype this up. Okay? So you can argue that Kawhi shouldn't be up there since he's already a champion, but – I understand having him at five. Like, you know, I would say he's the least out of all these guys under the uh, uh, pressure to win, seeing as though he's already won titles. Uh, now, Nikola Jokic, Stephen A. Smith has him in that f- number four. And I find it interesting that um, Mad Dog Russo and J.J. Redick were the only two people on the panel who had a problem with Nikola Jokic being on the list. Uh, and the excuse was that Nikola Jokic – doesn't have a good team around him. He doesn't have a good team. First and foremost, Nikola Jokic's team, the Denver Nuggets, are currently the number one seed in the Western Conference, okay? So he does have a good team. I'm tired of that narrative that he doesn't have a good team. He has a good team. If the team is good enough to be the best seed in the West in the regular season, then that team should be able to turn up in the playoffs, show up, show out, and get it done in the playoffs. Now, The bigger issue with Nikola Jokic, which I've been talking about on this channel, is the fact that the man is currently the reigning MVP. He's a two-time MVP, an overwhelming favorite to win uh, a third straight MVP, which would put him in very elite company. Larry Bird, uh, Bill Russell, and uh, Wilt Chamberlain, the only three players to win three straight MVPs. And all of those guys won championships, okay? Uh, So to put Nikola Jokic in that category without having won a championship would be them setting a new precedent. This would be unheard of, okay? Now, we all understand that the MVP is a regular season award. However, we also understand that the MVP voters change their criteria from year to year. The unwritten rule about the MVP is you got to get it done in the playoffs. That's the unwritten rule. Now, they don't say that, but we've all seen them do that to other players in prior years, okay? You hear the excuse of voter fatigue. You hear the excuse of, uh, uh, like, for instance, when Giannis. Giannis won two MVPs in a row and failed in the playoffs, okay? And unanimously, those videos are still on YouTube where you can go back and look at uh, these talk shows, these sports shows, where everybody's take was, well, you know, Giannis, you know, he can't get a, uh, he, he can't get another MVP unless he get it done. You know, he got to show up in the playoffs. I know the MVP is a regular season award, but you know, I just can't vote for him in good faith, uh, no matter how good he's playing, if I don't think he's gonna get it done in the playoffs. This is what they were saying about Giannis, I, and I had no problem with it because that next year. What Giannis did was he went and got that chip. He went and got the championship. So I want to know why the standard is different now for Nikola Jokic. Why is there no pressure on this guy? Why is it, oh, he doesn't have a good team? Well, when is voter fatigue going to set in? Because that's what we kept hearing about everybody else. When LeBron is winning back-to-back MVP, so he can't win three in a row because it's voter fatigue. People are tired of voting for LeBron. We know he's the best. We're tired of voting for him, Right. Michael Jordan, ah, voter fatigue. We can't keep voting for Michael Jordan. I mean, we just might as well give it to him every year. Right? 
So if it's voter fatigue for everybody else, why why is it no voter fatigue for Jokic, who's about to make history and be in elite company without ever winning the, winning the ring? Because we know if he wins it three straight, what's going to be the excuse next year? If he plays phenomenal next year, let's say Jokic's numbers are better next year than they are this year. Let's say next year Jokic is averaging 30 points now instead of 24 points he, he averaging today. Let's say Jokic is averaging – 30 points next year, a 30-point triple-double. And his team is still number one in the West. But they fail this year to get into a championship. What happens then? Next year, are they going to give him the MVP? Or are they going to say, ah, oh, well, you know, it's voter fatigue. Well, the damage has already been done. You've already set a new precedent and put in a new standard for how guys can win the MVP. You, they totally ignore the fact that Jokic plays zero defense, okay? Yes, he's a great weapon offensively. Uh, uh, he gets his teammates involved. He shares the ball. Very good all-around player, but you're ignoring a very crucial place, uh, piece of his game, which is defense. And if defense doesn't matter, then James Harden should have won many MVPs because it's been many, many seasons where James Harden was the best offensive player in the league and he didn't win MVPs. And the reason why they said he wasn't going to win it was because he didn't play defense. He wasn't a two-way player. But now the, the, the standards have changed for Nicole Jokic. So I agree with Jokic being on the list, but I would have Jokic up at number two. I would have Jokic at number two or number one. Um, he has Jason Tatum on there. Um, I'm a little iffy about Jason Tatum being on the list, but, you know, whatever. You know, maybe, okay, whatever. Jason Tatum, a great young player, um, he needs to win, but I don't know if he needs to win now. Like, it's not like, oh, if Jason Tatum loses this year, like if the Milwaukee Bucks smash the gas on the on the uh, Boston Celtics this year, like I'm sure we will smash the gas on them. I- I'm not going to look at Tatum as is, is Tatum is trash and he not good and blah, 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 because they lost. Um, Tatum's still virtually young. Uh, Tatum ain't won no MVPs. Um, you know, I, I just don't hear the, the the ramblings that Tatum is the best player in the NBA and all that kind of stuff. So whatever. I don't have a problem with him being on the list. It's just that I don't consider – I wouldn't have him that high. Maybe I'll put Tatum at four. You know what I'm saying? Um, Stephen A. Smith then has James Harden on the list. James Harden, um, yes, James Harden, I think, uh, needs a – he needs a championship. But James Harden is not the player he used to be. He's not the offensive weapon he used to be as far as the scoring juggernaut. James Harden has settled down into a point guard position where he's one of the league's leaders in assist, and he's playing like the traditional point guard role now. He's given just just enough points to make it, and uh, he's, he's dishing out assists. He's a point guard now. Like, um, I think he's – Falling out of the, that MVP status, um, where the pressure would be mounting on him, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but I under, do understand why he's on the list, you know what I mean? Because he does need that uh, for his resume. Him and Joel Embiid need that championship. Uh, you know, it's a shame that Joel Embiid is in the East because I can't root for him. I like Joel Embiid, but I can't root for him because I'm a Bucks fan and I want him to fail. Everybody in the East that's not a Milwaukee Buck, I want them to fail. So uh, it's sad because I would like to see Joel and B shine, um, you know, and, and get some some credit out here in these streets. But you know, um, him and James Harden will have to figure out how to get it done. Uh, let's see here, Chris Paul. Chris Paul for sure definitely needs to win one, and I'm gonna tell you why. Chris Paul is the point guard. That's what everybody's tell you. Chris Paul is the point guard. He's the perfect example of what a point guard should be. Chris Paul has played basketball since 1982. He's been in the NBA since 1983. This man ain't won nothing, okay? But everybody tell me how great of a point guard he is, how far superior, how smart he is. And, 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 you know, people make fun of other point guards and other players for not winning rings, saying that they make boneheaded decisions, like like Russ, for instance. They say Russ make boneheaded decisions. And, you know, Russ do do some goofy stuff sometimes. But they say Russ make boneheaded decisions, Um um, he just, you can't win. It's not winning basketball, blah, blah, blah. You can't win with Russ. Cool. Let's say if all of that's true, who is the total opposite of Russ? Who's the the point guard who plays the game the right way? Chris Paul. Okay, so why he ain't won nothing? 
Why he ain't won nothing? You can give me all the excuses you want. Man, Russ played with everybody, man. Chris Paul didn't play with everybody. Chris Paul played with James Harden. I can't remember all the people Chris Paul didn't play with. Chris Paul didn't play with some of everybody. Now he playing with Kevin Durant. He got Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. If Chris Paul can't get it done this year, y'all going to have to miss me with the whole Chris Paul uh, uh, point guard stuff and how blah, blah, blah. And I keep telling y'all, champion, it's more to winning NBA championships than just the individual play of a player. A lot of things go into, into uh, that, a lot of different factors. You need, <coughs> excuse me, you need uh, your team, uh, a good, well-balanced team, who has to be able to lock down on defense. Uh, you need some. You need to be able to score when it's necessary. You need a good coach. You need a lot of good things have to be working right, and you need some good luck. You need luck on your side. And so far, Chris Paul has just been unlucky. You know what I'm saying? He's been unlucky. You know what I'm saying? I like Chris Paul, but uh, he's going to have to get it done because I'm, I'm tired of everybody using him as some example of, of uh, court IQ, but then, you know, for whatever reason, he can't get it done. So that's my opinion on the matter. Y'all let me know what y'all think of this list. 78 Sports TV. Salute to the mighty LDBC. My father hit out. Deuces.